Hello, it's Phil for Digital DJ Tips. Now we've come outside onto the Digital DJ Tips office balcony here to, to set the scene. You've bought Tractor DJ, the app for iPad or iPhone or your iPod Touch. You've bought Tractor DJ and you're not a DJ but you're maybe going on holiday or you're maybe going to go to someone's barbecue, someone's pool party and you want to take Tractor DJ with you. You want to take it and you want to make sure that the old everyone kind of like bringing their their own iPods and their own MP3 players and trying to plug them into the stereo and big gaps between the music and all that stuff, all that stuff's history. You want to turn up with your mobile device and with your new copy of Tractor DJ and you want to do it. So by the mailbox that we get here at Digital DJ Tips, I know a couple of things. The first thing I know is that a lot of you guys are struggling with the basics, the real basics of this program. And the second thing I want to know is you're saying, okay, I've got an iPad, I've downloaded Tractor DJ, what other gear do I need? What other bits and pieces do I need that are going to make it easier to DJ with it, more fun to DJ with it, to make it sound better and so on. So in this short video, which accompanies an article on Digital DJ Tips, I'm going to go through seven of the biggest questions that we get asked about Tractor DJ that will hopefully help you as a complete beginner to DJing, to enjoy DJing at your next barbecue, pool party, on the beach, on holiday in your hotel room or wherever using one of these devices. Now it's extremely bright out here, there's no way I could show you the screens of these. So we're going to head back into the office, dim the lights, get the camera on this and I'm going to talk you through a few of the basics. So here we are back in the studio, back to work, but I can show you better here the screens on these things because they're very hard to see in the sunshine. As I'm sure you know if you've ever tried to look at some photos on your iPhone when you're sat in the sun. So. The first big question about Tractor DJ is how do I get my music into it? So Tractor doesn't have its own library and the confusion here is often that you will read in its built-in um, notification help center, you'll read them talking about Dropbox sync. So people think, oh what? well that's great, I can put my music in Dropbox and then I don't have to worry about iTunes and stuff. That's not how it works. Forget about the Dropbox sync completely when it comes to your actual music. The music that this plays is from iTunes. So you need to sync this up to your main computer and get music onto it from iTunes and the way you always have done and the way you always do with that or with the iPhone. And the other way of doing it, of course, is if you are an Apple person and you have, uh, you have iTunes Match, which is the iTunes service that lets you have the same music on all your computers, like cloud music, that will work, but you must have them downloaded onto your device. And also stuff that you buy on your device. So if you're buying music with the music app on here, that's gonna appear there as well. But when you go into the library on this, you're only seeing the music that Apple has got in its authorized music library. So that's how you get music into it. So that's the, the answer to that question. So the next question is, um, this is quite a long one actually, um, but it's also one of the biggest confusions about this software. So the, the question gets asked in all these kind of ways and the answer is exactly the same. Uh, why is my music too fast? I mix one record into another and it's too fast. The, the one that I'm mixing in is way, way, way too fast. Why does that happen? Or, um, of course, why is it too slow? Why is it not the speed it should be? Um, and the question comes up in another way and that way is when I press um, play, to start my new tune playing, why doesn't it play straight away? Why does it sometimes wait a second or two? And, and, and it's, it seems completely unpredictable. Um, I just want it to start playing. Now all of these questions relate back to the same thing. Tractor DJ is a streamlined, easy way of replicating what DJs on full-size equipment do manually. And not just all DJs, but electronic DJs who are beat matching properly, which means playing tunes at the same tempo and making sure the beats don't clash and making sure they all line up and making sure it sounds very smooth. You know the kind of DJing I'm talking about. Now Tractor DJ does a few things on your behalf to make that easy to do on the small screen of one of these or even on the smaller screen of one of those. And also, frankly, when you either haven't got the skills or can't be bothered doing it, you know, you're just at a party or a barbecue or something, you don't want to be doing all this manual beat matching stuff. So Tractor tries to do a lot of it for you. And 
it does that by syncing the beats and then trying to decide what the first beat is of the bar. Now a bar of music, don't get confused by any of this, a bar of music is really, really simple. A bar of music is, if you're dancing to a tune, if you started counting, you'd go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that one, that loud one, it's always gonna be where something big happens in the tune, that is the first beat of your bar. And Tractor will try and line those up for you. Now that's great. But what if you don't want that? What if you're playing at a party where you're playing hip hop, house, pop, trap, um, country and western? I'm just trying to name every kind of music that's coming into my head here. You know, you're playing at a party where you're out, you're expected to play a bit of everything, where you want to play a bit of everything. You don't want to DJ in that kind of way. You know, you just want to play tunes and cut the gaps out if you like, do a better version of keeping the music going at the party. How do you do that with Tractor DJ? And also, if you are finding the results aren't sounding how you want them to and you're not musically minded enough and you're not DJ minded enough to understand why, again, you might just want to turn that off, stop that happening. You want to get a tune onto one of your virtual decks and then hit play and it just plays at the speed that it was intended to be played at and so on. And then you're just probably blending smoothly between them using the crossfader. The crossfader, of course, is this little knob here. You're just moving slowly between them and then just as soon as you've mixed one out you get another tune on the other deck and so on. So you just DJ in the old way, you know, the way that mobile guys still do it, the way the radio does it. There's an easy way to do it and that is on the tune you want to mix in, turn off this sync button, like that. Now the tune's BPM reading in the top corner here will return to the BPM that it should have been, i.e. that it was recorded at, and when you hit the play button it will just play. So what does this mean? Why does Tractor do this stuff? And, and, and are we missing a trick by just turning it off? Well, we kind of are. And you want to look into beat gridding. Now, there is information in here about beat gridding, and it's what these lines here are. These lines are Tractor's guess where that one, two, three, four happens in your tunes. And more often than not, by hitting a little button on here and by moving them slightly on the waveform, you can correct the errors that sound bad when you have got those sync buttons switched on. But that's beyond this tutorial. This tutorial is to try and just get you going on it. So if you're having any problems at all, especially if you, you know, you're not using headphones, headphones are quite important sometimes for getting beat matches right and so on. You just want to play music using the app, just switch the sync off. Okay, so the next uh, question is about AirPlay and about Bluetooth. So lots of people have been saying, hey, you know, I've been going into my settings on here and I've been setting it to play through my Bluetooth speaker or through my AirPlay speaker and there's, it's just like I can't mix, it's not, they're not lining, the beats aren't lining up, it doesn't sound right. Uh, why is that? Well, that is a limitation of the of the Apple system, of the Apple software and of Bluetooth. It's not a limitation of Tractor DJ. And it's putting a gap, basically. There's a little bit of buffering or a little bit of delay. If you've ever streamed anything over the internet live, you'll know that there's buffering and delay. And it's the same thing. So the solution to that is to use a wired speaker. Now, of course, you're heading off on holiday. You haven't got room to take your big speakers with you. But this kind of speaker, this is by a company called Minirig. Um, this kind of speaker, there's lots and lots of copies of this and lots and lots of speakers that are similar, uh, is absolutely awesome. It, is, it recharges by USB, so no need for any batteries in the instance of this one, uh, but they just have a little socket and they're provided with a tiny little lead, like one of these. Charging lead in there as well, but this is the, uh, this is the lead that does all the action for you. So just a tiny little lead, like this, and you plug one end into your speaker, and one in into your iOS device and all of a sudden this thing is going to pump out really nice volume for you. Actually surprisingly good little speaker this. Uh, so that's my recommendation, this little mini rig. But as I say, there's lots of copies of this. Altec Lansing do one, for instance. Uh, any small portable speaker that plugs into here by wire rather than the current trend for Bluetooth and AirPlay is much, much better for using Tractor DJ with. So another big question is about, um, you know, it's a DJ question really, but Tractor, as, as I keep saying, Tractor DJ has been made to be fun to use if you're an experienced DJ and easy to use if you're not. So there's a feature in here which is just absolutely, absolutely awesome. Uh, the question is, what 
helped me to choose the next tune when I'm DJing. Now I have, I've recorded whole DJ courses on programming your music uh, and I've written countless articles on it and I answer hundreds of emails a year from people saying how do I get my set sounding right, how do I keep the energy levels right, how do I plan a long DJ set and all that. Now we're not going to go into any of that but there's a secret in here which is just incredible. It's so good that when I'm DJing now on my big DJ setup with my normal DJ software, I actually miss the software that's built into these two. And what that is, is a recommendation engine. Now the recommendation engine allows you to choose from a set of pre-chosen tracks that Tractor thinks are gonna mix really nicely with the one that's currently playing. So in this instance, here is my screen, and here is a tune that's currently playing or not playing as the case may be. So if I want to put a tune onto this deck, I touch there and it will look at the tune that's currently playing, which is here, and down here are its guesses for good next tunes. So the ones at the top it thinks are gonna go best, and the ones lower down decreasingly gonna go well, and then towards the bottom of this list it's stuff that's only kind of vaguely related to it. Now there's a lot of art as well as science in here, but the science is that it's looking at the BPM and it's also looking at the key of the tune and trying to find something that is musically right as well as tempo right. So that is a good starting point and you can find yourself just DJ. You know, you're at a pool party, this thing is perched on your knee. You don't want to be, you don't want to have your, your head stuck in here all the time just looking for the next tune to play. You just want a few good ideas, you know, and that is it. That is your good idea engine. I thoroughly recommend using that. By the way, another recommendation is when you're importing your music from iTunes, I recommend just having a few playlists, you know, so you could have a playlist for dance music. So in your iTunes, you might have all kind of music. So you could separate your DJ stuff from your non-DJ stuff, or you could have like different tempos, so you could have kind of down tempo and you know up tempo uh, and, and then non-dance non music. So now when you're in here, there's an easy way of selecting your playlists in here and then they're just all there. And another good thing is that the history is recorded in here as well. So you can see what you did last week when you played at someone's party. Uh, so just a couple more tips for picking the right tunes there, but that recommendation engine is absolutely solid gold. I promise you, you'll find yourself probably DJing out of it most of the time when you're using this app, that's how, that's how good it is. So another big question is about using your headphones with this. You know, DJs have got headphones on, right? That's what they do. They sit there with their headphones on doing stuff. How do you do it with one of these? Because obviously, once you've plugged your speaker into here, there's nowhere to plug your headphones in. So the answer, there's two answers really that I'm gonna show you. Uh, one of them is far more expensive than the other. And the cheap one is by buying yourself one of these. This is a DJ splitter cable or a mono splitter cable. Now a word of warning here, you need a mono splitter cable or ideally one that is specifically called a DJ splitter cable. I won't go into why but just trust me. Now the one I've got here is by a company called Griffin and it just works. So if you, if you can find this one, you can get these from about $5 upwards. This one I think was $15 or something like that. So what you do with it is take your I device and you plug your cable in there and now we have two outputs. Into one of these we can plug our headphones which will give you, there we go, it's my headphones plugged in to there. So now I can hear what I need to hear on there and then to the other one we plug our speaker, speaker that you saw earlier. There we go. So this setup now is all you need to do headphone monitoring and to listen on your speaker. Now, all you need to know to get that work is to go into get that working is to go into the settings and select the split cue or the headphones uh, splitter option because otherwise it won't work properly. And you might just need to swap these two around to get it to work how you think it should. But that is how to get headphone monitoring. And by the way, you know, if you are a complete newbie, the reason we have this headphone monitoring is so you can listen to the next tune before your audience hears it, before it goes through your speaker. And that just gives you the chance to make sure it's right, to make sure you're gonna start at the right point. And when you move your crossfader across to the next tune and then hit play, everyone else can hear it, but you heard it first to get it all right. The expensive way moves us on to our final question. The final question is, um, I've seen this Tractor Control Z1 controller and I, I know it works with the Tractor DJ app I bought. Um, 
you know, I'm loving this. I'm loving Tractor DJ. Is it worth buying that? Well, here it is. This is the Tractor Control Z1 or Z1 for our American friends. It is a professionally built device from Native Instruments built to the same standard as all of its digital DJ gear, that's to say a high standard, and it's designed to take some of the controls off what is often a very, very tiny screen and put them right into your hands. So you get a crossfader like a normal DJ would use to quickly flick between the two channels. You get volume control on your two channels. You've got these are filters, so this is a, a classic DJ effect which you will find yourself using and abusing, I promise you, if you buy one of these. They are in the app as well, but they're easier to use here. And then you've got bass, middle and treble. Again, if this is all in the app, it just frees it up. And the gain control is just a, an extra volume control to get everything balanced before you start doing your actual mixing. A few other stuff as well, headphones, volumes and so on, and a few extra effects, bits and pieces on here. But basically, this unit plugs into your iDevice using a special lead that they provide. Um, this is the lead. So you plug one end into here, like this. The other end goes into your iDevice, so let's just use the iPhone. Oh, in fact, let's use the iPad. This is something you need to know, actually. It's a 30 pin they provide, so if you've got a newer iDevice, you're going to have to buy an adapter. Uh, or just f try and find a lead that's similar with a, with a lightning conduct uh, conductor connector on it. So uh, there we go, that plugs in there like that. Uh, you put the whole lot down and then the final thing you need to do is plug some mains electricity into the back of here. And the reason for that is that this thing now will charge this. So you've now got an extra benefit that this is meaning this is gonna go on forever. You're never gonna run out of battery. And the, the, the third benefit, if you like, is there is no need for this cable, which is, of course, why we started talking about it. And the reason for that is that this has got its own headphone socket here, and around the back, it's got its own audio outs. Although these are twin RCA outs, they're not the same as the little headphone socket on most tiny equipment like we've been looking at. That's okay, it just means you need to buy a twin RCA to what's called mini jack lead. And this is a mini jack lead, it's just the same as you see on all headphones. So you want a twin RCA to mini jack lead, and that's it. That's your little system, that's your little setup. You've now got, it sounds better than when you plug one of those in. To start with, your headphones are in full stereo and your main speakers are in full stereo, should you have stereo speakers, of course. That one, that's mono anyway, so you would never notice. But um, to start with, it's gonna sound better, it's gonna be louder. You could actually play in a nightclub using this uh, and using the iPad. It's, I mean, it's that good. So. If you're serious about it, if you've got the bug DJing with Tractor DJ, then I recommend going for that. It, you know, it's like 220, I think, or $250. It's a lot of money. But the good news is that it also works with big Tractor, with Tractor Pro on a computer. So if you really, really get the bug and you decide that you want to take the plunge and get a full DJ set up, then this thing is still gonna work with it and you don't have to just toss it by the wayside. So armed with all that information, you're now in a great position to have a great pool party, to enjoy your next barbecue party, to enjoy your holiday, to rock your hotel room, wherever you're gonna be using Tractor DJ. It is a great little program. I hope you have fun with it. And if you are watching this six months after I've recorded it, the middle of December, or you're in Australia where it's already winter, hey, it doesn't need to be sunny to enjoy your music. Enjoy it wherever you are. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.